Hello, my name is Sammy Joseph Fredericks and welcome to the Liberian Women in Business Empowerment Network, where we share with you inspiring stories of Liberian women around the world who are business owners, their career professionals, their community crusaders, and even ministry leaders. The, goals of, um, the goal of sharing these stories with you is to inspire a Liberian woman out there along her own journey. Um, today, we will be speaking with Mrs. Wiata Murray. Wiata is a principal paralegal with Medtronic. I know in the, in the past, we've brought you interviews with business owners, but Wiata works with Medtronic, and she uh, will be sharing her story with us today. So, Wiata, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to the show. Thank you. It's my absolute pleasure. So, that was a high-level introduction. Tell me, who is Wiata Murray and uh, uh, a little bit about what you do with Medtronic? Okay, first off, I am a child of God, daughter of Emmanuel and Emily, <laughs> wife of Kirk, and mother to Kiani and Chloe, bonus mother to Shanice and Kiria. And I am also um, an avid runner. I am a, currently a principal paralegal at Medtronic. I've been there for about 10 years. Um, and my goal this year is to transition into a new role as well as to probably increase my service um, within the company. Okay, so you say you've been with Medtronic 10 years. How many roles have you had? And tell us a little bit about those different roles. Okay, I started as an associate paralegal in 2005. Um, and at the time, I, interestingly enough, I, I started at the company when I actually was taking a break and decided I didn't want to seek any employment. I had just moved from Maryland to Florida. I was a new wife and a new military wife, and he was always traveling. And so I thought, you know, I should take about six months to really get grounded in this new state. And I forgot that I had posted onto Monster, and I got a call from a, a temp agency, and they said, There's a company who's interested in you. And so Medtronic pursued me for about three weeks, and I had six interviews. And initially, they wanted me to be a legal secretary, and I just said, That's not the position that I would like. And so we eventually interviewed with six people, three VPs for the role as an associate paralegal. And within three to four years, um, my manager finally said to me, you know, it's time for you to invest in yourself. And so we started to look at career development for me. So after that, I became a senior paralegal. And then I transitioned in 2009 to a senior compliance specialist. And then a principal compliance specialist in 2010, I think, or 2011. And I have transitioned now into a principal paralegal and compliance specialist with the company. Back into the okay. legal function. Yeah, I know. I, I remember when you, before you started working with the company, you had reached out to me because, you know, of course, you know, my sister, Amber, you guys go way back and you had reached out to me. I was with Medtronic at the time and you were like, you know, tell me about Medtronic. You know? And just to see how you have grown you know, over the years since you started there is really amazing. Um, tell us about how you prepared for your interview with Medtronic. And how you prepare now, even as you are within the company, how you prepare to move into other roles? I think, you know, initially, I'm not sure that I really prepared for the interview. I am one of those people who I, I firmly believe that, that, you know, opportunities come along and you prepare as you go along within your um, experience in whatever facet of life you're in. So I, I worked at Tishman Real Estate in the legal department. I worked with uh, Phillips Publishing Company. And then my last employment was with AT&T in the legal department as well. However, those were different legal functions. I think just interviewing for Medtronic, they knew I was qualified. It was more of how would I fit in their culture? So I have found that after that interview and as I have progressed within the company, it's more about how I fit versus what my resume states. Because a lot of times your resume already states that you're qualified for a role. It's more how do you present yourself and sell yourself to obtain that role. So I find that as I've transitioned, my preparation has mainly been to focus on what is the role that I would like to have. I'm very selective in the roles that I, that I really interview for or even accept. And so it's how can I bring value to this role? And, and during the interview, I focus mostly on how can I be an asset to you? How can I be an asset in this function? Um, I think it's a blessing having to work at the same company and understand the culture. 
Um, so it makes it a little bit easier, but I would say that it's more of selling myself as how can I be an asset and how can I bring value to your company? Because in most times, you know, especially within the medical in the industry, medical device industry, and in a legal department, your roles are set and you pretty much know what the function entails. It's just understanding that work culture, relating to those people and being able to say, here's how I see myself fit. Cause most times they won't see you fit. So it, it it's, I wouldn't necessarily say prepare other than know with the culture and know where you're going, um, know what your intentions are and be specific with those. And I think that's how that that's where really, really what I would say is was my preparation. I think that along the way, your work experience speaks for itself. And as you move up in a company, it, it tends to your merit tends to speak for itself. And if you consistently deliver, it's not a hard transition when it comes to moving to a new function. Well, I talked to you a few days ago before we set up the interview and we were talking about, and I saw when you sent me that uh, piece that the Medtronic Women's Network had done on you a couple of years, last year, was it last year? And mm -hmm. uh, you said, so I was like, do you get promoted every, every year? And you're like, no, it's been, it's been every two years since year three. So do you have a, do you plan out your career that, do you say, you know what, I'm going to be in this role for two years and then my goal is to move into another role or are you, um, is this just something short term that you're trying to move into another role? I don't necessarily plan for a title. I think what I do is plan to develop myself for an opportunity. So, you know, they say, they tell me at work that I'm lucky, but I think luck is preparation meeting the opportunity. Right. And so I am, I am intrinsically motivated. I tend to, I, I get dry from what I do and I get bored very easily if I'm not challenged. And I've been fortunate in my, especially in my career to have bosses that are really, they, they really promote autonomy. So it's a lot of, I get what I want and I go after what I want. So what I have found is once I settle into a function, the first question I ask is how can I make this function better? And how can I prepare the next person for this function? Because it's very clear that when I get into a function, I know I need to make sure that if tomorrow I am moved up to another role, I need to make sure there's somebody who's competent to continue in this role. So I think it's more of a, how do I take a function or a job or any one of my positions? My goal has always been, how do I make it so that not one, that I'm the only person who's valuable to that role, but that I can share my knowledge and share my expertise with others within my team so that it allows me to pretty much expand the role. Uh, most of my roles have been very limited at the time that I've gotten them or they have not existed. And what has happened is I've had to sort of create my job description. And in that creation, I tend to find another niche or another area that I think, huh, I might be able to work this. And so as I move into those roles, I just continue to build on them. And I, I continue to say, here's what's been done, but here's what I can bring to this role. And it, it just opens up the path for another person. I would say the only role that I didn't prepare for for was moving into compliance because it was sort of a sudden I was called into an office on Wednesday and asked, Hey, how much do you know about compliance? And all I said was, well, I've read the business conduct standards. And I was told, well, you know it by Friday because you start on Friday in that role. So that wasn't a position that I was prepared for. But I think again, because I delivered, because I was analytical, because I used those life skills that, you know, pretty much had consistently helped me to deliver, it was easy to trust that I could move into another role without compliance knowledge. And they knew she'll get it and she'll still deliver and she'll still meet the needs and she may expand this role. And I would like to say that's exactly what I did. Personal and professional development, really, really important to our success. Uh, what, what, do, what do they look like for you? Until 2008, I did not consider personal development or professional development. I'll be honest with you. I think it was, you know, we grew up in a culture where our parents worked hard. They stayed at the same job for a long time. They worked hard. They, did, they, they just knew they had to be loyal to their company. And I think what happened in 2008 was a shift. I was selected for a high potential program. And most companies have that where a manager or HR decides this employee is really eligible to move up to maybe a director position or uh, uh, to senior level management. And so they put you in a program where they, number one, sort of evaluate you. They do a disc assessment and then they present the company to you at a higher level. And they say, here's the direction of the company. Now let's, let's learn about you and how you fit. And so you're, you're assigned a coach who works with you for three months. And at that time you set a 30 day or 60 day and a 90 day goal. And that coach works with you for that entire duration just to figure out, okay, how can I develop? And I found in those first 30 days, he said to me, you're so invested in this company. 
but you're not invested in yourself. <laughs> he said, you have the skills to really sell yourself in a higher role, but you're so invested to this current role that you're limiting your growth. And I, I, I paused because I never had, I thought that if you worked hard and you did your work, that it was enough for people to give you a promotion. And what he taught me at that point was, no, if you don't sell yourself, like Liberians say, if you don't sell it, nobody will buy you. It's the same thing. If I didn't sell myself, no one would look at me. And so he pushed me to go out of network. He pushed me to go out of my standard day to day. He pushed me to network. He pushed me to work with VPs, talk to a mentor, find out from other people how they grew. And it was at that point that I realized, oh, it's not working hard that gets me to grow. It's really developing myself and expanding my network and really trying to go outside of what I'm paid to do that really provides me this opportunity. And it was at that, from that point on, I did more professional development programs. I worked with that coach for about three months and he actually kept me on for another year, not on Medtronic Stein, but continuously working with me because he saw the potential and he didn't want me to quit on myself. And again, I was just really hesitant to go out there and sell myself to anyone. Cause I always thought, hmm, you know, I'm maybe kissing behind or sucking up. But really what it was, was just saying, here are the things that I've done and keep me in mind so that if I left an imprint on somebody after that conversation, whether or not they were my direct boss, I knew that that person would remember. And whenever there was a role that came up, they would say, I know someone who's ready for that role. And that surprisingly has happened. So, you know, personal professional development is doing what you're paid to do and going above and beyond and expanding your network, finding opportunities to develop yourself. Um, we can't do it all for ourselves and believe it or not, your manager may not do it for you because of the comfort level that they have you there. If you're stuck in that role, you're consistently doing the work for them. You know, nobody wants to promote you all the time. It takes a special kind of leader to do that. So it's, you know, find out what certifications you need find out who are the people you need to talk to find out if there are any mentors. And I'm, I'm a firm believer in having a mentor and keeping that circle of friends. Um, I keep a friend who. I can call and tell anything and she can honestly say to me, no, you, you had the wrong approach. Get your emotions out of this. And then I had someone who professionally I worked for, I was an assistant for someone at at and And whenever I had a situation where I felt like I need some counsel, I went to him and it was strictly professional, but he always gave me the guidance that I needed. So you want to make sure you have the people that can be honest and transparent with you as well as share ideas and how to grow. And over the years, Years, I've picked mentors, professional mentors, just to sort of help me along the way, professors at school. So, you know, you can really develop yourself in many ways and sometimes not within the company. The other thing for development that I would challenge, and I cannot say this enough, is go beyond your job description. I think that is how I've consistently delivered. I've always sought, you know, within the medical device industry, everything changes every year. Mm -hmm. And I am one of those people who I ensure that I am prepared for any sort of change. So the second I hear that, oh, this department may be forming into one or this business may be merging, I put on my thinking caps and I start to think of, well, how could this work for my function? So don't wait for the appointed change to be told what you need to do, but work, prepare and plan in advance so that you can say, here's my vision. It may not be the vision that you decide to go with, but here's what I would like to offer. And most times you'll be surprised. You would be one out of maybe 15 people that actually have that vision. And because you have something, is usually received and then that becomes a oh so change is coming let's find Wietta because she can offer that so again it's just you know do your grind but go beyond that and just go where you're not comfortable get comfortable with being uncomfortable because yeah. that's that's the key thank you uh, so much for sharing that so I know you're probably going to hate me for using this word but um <laughs> you're a wife you're a mom you're an avid runner you're an employee with Medtronic how do you, okay, I'll say attempt. How do you attempt to balance all of these uh, different roles that you have? I no longer attempt to balance. I just can't. It's not possible. And it's uh, trying to balance is trying to reach for something that's unattainable. In today's world, we are blessed with technology. We're blessed with iPhones, um, iPads, computers that allow us to work remotely. And so I have accepted that what I have to do is blend. What I have to do is just accept that this will be a blend, that there will be a day that I will be at a kid's gymnastics meet and there will be a work phone call and I will have to step out for a minute and answer that call, but I can turn it off and walk back into that gymnastics meet. I think that when we try to achieve that balance, it becomes more of an overwhelming sort of 
you set yourself up for failure. I think what I have found is you just have to accept that I play these many roles. And at one given time, I may be 100% in role as mother and 100% in role as employee. But there's a sacrifice and there's a give and take. And what I have to recognize is when I am in a role at a given time, give it my best. And when I'm out of that role, switch into the next role and keep it moving. Because that's that's how you learn to accept and manage your space. Um, I don't think the expectation is for us to be 100% at everything. I think the expectation is for us to accept what we have, make the best of what we have, and value the time we have. You know, I used to really, really say I wish that I was a stay-at-home mom, but I knew that I would never be a happy stay-at-home mom because, number one, they aren't stay-at-home moms. They're work-at-home moms. Uh -huh. And I knew that there was something about going to work and actually sharing all of this stuff in here that's, you know, that I could mentor people, inspire people, help people, and actually, you know, contribute to a mission of a company. And I didn't want to deprive myself of that because I would be leaving my baby for the day. But I knew that at five o'clock when I got to daycare to pick her up and I saw that beautiful smile, I knew at that point for the next hour, everything else is off and she gets that time. So I think it's one of those things that you just grow to accept. And as you grow to accept that you, you get comfortable in your skin and you get comfortable in your role and you just agree and just move with it. So there is no balance for me. It's strictly a blend. I love that. So I know that running is a huge part of your life. Tell me how you got, why you started running and what keeps you motivated. Running. Um, I literally started running after I had my first kid. Um, it was the only chance I had to get away from her. And so I started, run I started going outside. Actually, I started walking. And after walking, I decided, oh, you know, this feels good. Let me try a little bit longer and see how far I can go. And every day as a break to get away from the baby, I started going more and more. And I found that I'm really enjoying this thing. And so I decided to keep going. But as I have continued running over the past three and a half years, wow. what I've learned is that I literally run for my life. I run away from anxiety. I run away from depression. I, I, I run for therapy. And so I find that it's become not only this escape, but it's really become something that I can find that I'm getting therapy from. Um, I get to release. I'll get to clear my head. I get to go outside and believe it or not, do things that I didn't believe my body could do. Mm -hmm. And it, it's become an, anal an analogy for life. You know, I, I started off and I couldn't walk around the track and then I, I couldn't even run a 5k. And then I ran five miles and then I ran nine miles and then I ran 13 miles. And on the day before I ran 13 miles, I said, I'm doing a full 26.2. And I signed up and ran a marathon. And I thought, wow. And at no point did I stop and say, I can't do this anymore. Because I realized that the further I would go after people had told me, you will never run. I realized then and there that there is nothing I can't accomplish if I didn't put my mind to it. It, it really, it, the, the, the mind over matter literally translated into my life. And as I went through hardships in life and through tough times, like death, loss of my parents, running kept me going. Because I could just go out there and cry and let it all out. I could pound that pavement and let out any anger, frustration with my husband on a given day because I needed help or I was overwhelmed. I was able to just release it all there. And running became a part of my life. And now it's a lifestyle. I get up three times a day, three times a week before sunshine and I'm gone. And it's my release. It's the beginning of my day. And I wouldn't do anything else now. You've been such an inspiration and your story is just amazing. So um, to close, we had uh, just one last word of advice to a, a Liberian woman out there watching. Anything that you will tell somebody who's watching right now. Be your authentic self. Do not conform to what people expect you to be. Um, I think that I have done as much as I can in my little span of life by simply being me. There is something in each of us that's valuable and a job description or a husband or, you know, a potential mate, no matter what it is that you hope to achieve, if you can stay true to who you really are, I think just at the onset and every day there, people will grow to love you. You, you have to understand that we were made to be different for a reason. And in the purpose, 
personal spectrum, you have to remember that there is some value you bring to everyone. And we may not know it. I, I, I say I didn't find myself until I was 30 years old. You may not quite know what your gift is. You may not know what it is that you bring to this world. But if you stay true to who you are and you align yourself to your beliefs, there the, I call these things my core beliefs. There are things that I believe in honesty. I believe in service. I believe in being kind to people. I just truly believe in sharing my story because I, I'm not a millionaire. I'm not a billionaire, but I'm a young woman who came from nothing. And People may never believe it, but there were times that I had nothing and I had to learn to just keep in perspective and who do I believe I am? I believe that I can accomplish anything I want. So believe in yourself and be, and be happy and be satisfied with who you are as you are. And if it's, a, if, if it's not in your path and it's not in your destiny, you won't get to where that, that place is. And that's okay. You know, I think that every obstacle, every failure is just setting us up for what is meant for us. And I, I choose not to even use the word failure anymore. I, use, I call them life lessons or opportunities to learn because I think that every experience helps you. And I have found that the more I get away from who I am, the, the, the less successful I am, the more I try to conform to what people expect me to be, I'm not that person. So when you go into that job interview, be you, sell yourself because you have to come there, you know, 52 weeks a year and you don't want to interview not being your authentic self. And then they find you a different person. Be true to who you are because it, it will really shine your light. Um, prepare yourself, develop yourself. Don't wait for a promotion. Don't wait for them to hand it to you. Go out there for what you want. And sometimes we may think it has to be promotion within a company. Take risks. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. And just know and trust that if you don't get something, it's because there's something better in store for you. And if you stay true to who you are, you prepare yourself and develop yourself, you know the sky's the limit. And give back. Don't go up the ladder and not reach back. Because there's something about getting that job and thinking, I have finally reached a position that I wanted. But if you can't develop other people to do that job, no one's going to let you grow because you've, you've mastered that art so well that they're going to get comfortable with you being there. So it's going to take you pulling someone else up to really get them out there. And if you're going for that job interview, prepare yourself, develop yourself, go there knowing, you know, my hair may be a little kinky today, or, you know, I may not have the right color of skin, or I may not be dressed well enough. You know, I did my interview without pantyhose coming from DC. I remember my hair was in this natural state and I got there that day and I thought, I don't even want to interview. And here I met three VPs that day. And what they remembered saying was, oh my gosh, your smile and your sense of humor, it, it really was captivating. And so it was just being me. So be who you are, because if you're not who you are, you're not going to fit and it's going to be really uncomfortable. No, no, no amount of money in the world is worth it. Thank you, Wietta, so much. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much for, for sharing your story and for inspiring me, first of all, and inspiring uh, whoever is watching out there. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. Take good care. All the best in your endeavors. This is awesome. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>